This is a special edition of the Tip Network, uh, focusing on social combat, social commentary, combat sports, and self improvement. So, uh, Mr. Scott, why are we on Zoom, uh, not in studio, and figuring out what what's happened that we have to talk to each other? What's going on? Well, some current event breaking news actually happened yesterday, where out of Conyers, John, well, I can't even say this, Conyers, Georgia, at Pseudo Bar and Grill, a shooting had occurred where one man ended up shooting another patron of the bar and also injured two other people, one a security guard and another bystander in the bar. So this one, the suspect's name is James Simpson. And he was arrested by an off-duty Roxdale sheriff named uh, Barry. And that's basically what the story is. And oh, and with this too, is all the victims had survived the initial attack. And now that James Simpson is charged with aggravated assault and reckless endangerment. Okay, so uh, I'm going to translate that. Scott, you did a wonderful job of reading exactly what was going on. Um, you know, it was very, you know, Scott was speaking for our Asian uh, slash Caucasian coalition. I'm going to speak to the brothers <laughs> out there to say that uh, two hood boogers got into it over a spilt beer. Uh, hood booger number one, who was uh, worse than hood booger number two, uh, had brandished a weapon but was keeping it hidden. According to the video that we both looked at, hood booger number two started throwing punches after they exchanged words. And, uh, what basically happened was that hood booger number one uh, took his pistol and shot in a, a room full of people because he couldn't take an ass whooping, apparently. And, Actually, uh, let's, let's, say, let's do this real quick. Hood booger number one is hood booger, booger blue because that was the, the suspect's whatever he was wearing. Navy yeah, yeah, hood booger blue. Hood booger blue. Yeah. And then hood, yeah. Boo <laughs> hood booger white is the, the victim. Hood booger case. blue and hood booger white. And and this is just the, the thing that I don't like about this is that we have to, as a culture, uh, and this guy, and, and I, at first when I was a youngster, I this was something that like, you know, you know, well, well, my mom would be like, I bet you they black. Look at that. Only black people do that. But now all races of people are just like personifying poor behavior. Uh, hood booger one and hood booger two are hood booger blue and hood booger white are are are, are uh, African American or black. But honestly, I've seen this same type of behavior out when I when I when I was uh, working in clubs as a bouncer. I've seen the same behavior in the last decade out of all races of folks. I'm saying that we have to stop personifying poor behavior. I mean, first of all, just analyzing the short clip, looking at the short clip that we had. Uh, it looks like there was and ample opportunity clips too. Multiple yeah. clips. Ample opportunity to walk away from fight. Ample opportunity for not to fight at all. Uh, apparently, it was a spilled drink. A spilled drink is that worth yeah. a lie? Yeah. What? 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 Uh, uh, Negro Domus couldn't fucking predict that shit. I mean, that's just stupid. Uh, and I'll see you. I'll send you a clip of that so you know. But it, it, it's just stupid. With the spilled drink, though, I mean, one person could have never brand one person should have Hood Booger Blue should never brandish his weapon and draw drew it out inside of a packed uh, bar and grill, while the other one, Hood Booger White, the victim in this case, should have just walked away and not been offended that his that his drink got spilled over. So now to analyze from your perspective. Watching the video, do you think that hood? I can't we call, we're calling him Hood Booger White. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. Hood can, we, can we say the, the victim in white? Is that the right, right they're both hood boogers. They both got in a fight. They're hood boogers. They got in a fight. They're pookies and ray rays. Okay, they got in a fight over <laughs> a stupid spilt drink. And we're only you laughing right now is because people are are still alive. That's, yeah. that's the only reason. I, why. Look, look, at first, I thought people had died, and I was really upset. I'm happy that people are alive, but I have to say that this is absolutely stupid. It's absolutely stupid. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if this dude was talking about his mom. There's no reason for you to pull a pistol. And and the other guy, you know, he hit him a few times, and the guy just pulled his gun and shot him. So mm. literally, you know, I, I'm so tired of people 
I'm so tired of tough guys who can't throw a punch who shoot people. Mm-hmm. You, you you let a fu- you let go you fire a firearm with a bunch of crowded uh, a bar and grill. With it kids, looks like there children, looks like there was only there. adults there at least. But there was plenty of people around. Three people got hurt. Yeah. So this motherfucker can't even shoot. Mm-hmm. Dude is four feet away from him, and he gonna shoot everybody. He shoot two other people besides the person he's shooting. Well, I mean, so on the video, you can hear him shoot three times, maybe two times. But he definitely shot one or twice in the first video. And then as he was going um, going outside of the bar, what you see is a security guard at the front entrance started to walk towards the action once that security guard was aware of the action that was happening or the gunfire that was happening. And so as he walked towards, or you can tell that he was rushing towards that or going off camera really quickly. Right, right. In one second, one and a half seconds, you see him on the ground backpedaling, or actually he was falling into the victim in white where yeah. at this point you can tell that the security guard was hit in the leg because he didn't get up and he was like shuffling as fast as he can on the ground on his butt looking for cover while the 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 perpetrator in navy blue went out to go search for his victim the victim in white going outside of a door and that's where the perpetrator was apprehended yeah. outside by the off-duty uh, Roxdale oh. sheriff. Oh. Off to the sheriff, I apprehended him. But you know that security guard was thinking to himself, damn it, I do not make enough money to get shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a job. I was at $50 an hour. It's a bar and grill. Uh, the bar and grill owner said uh, they've been open since 2014. This has never happened there. Uh, this is just, it's just sad. It's a sad state of affairs when, I mean, you know, like, bar and grills is supposed to be the calm place. It's not a club. It's a bar and grill. You go there, you drink a little, maybe there's some music playing, you know, you, you do the Cupid shuffle and you take your ass home. And, and now, you know, I, I don't know if it's ego, lack of understanding how to handle yourselves. But I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't 15, 25 years. I don't know if that's enough to curb this type of behavior, but I, I have to reiterate this as a culture in general, people, uh, 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 millennials under have to stop celebrating and embracing that type of behavior. Like one thing uh, that made me upset was that I was just looking at comments and people were like, whoa, well, I guess the, the comments should have been pure outrage. Why are you letting a firearm off with all of those innocent people? That's o- only room for comments is that. Yeah. Only room for, that's the only room in the comment. Any comment celebrating anything of that nature needs to be admonished. The people who did it, you know, if you know somebody who's who's celebrating that, you need to tell them, hey, you know what? You're celebrating bad behavior. You personally need to take accountability for what you celebrate and what you personify. I, I mean, what's, it just has to happen. What specifically are you seeing in the comment section that that is making you say that? Well, I'm going I'm to uh, go, go to it right now because I have seen that just the clip I had seen just a clip yesterday and I didn't know any of the, any of the backstory. Cause it came out pretty quick. I mean, it seemed like with the first initial clip that people started to post, it seemed like someone got killed. Like that's how I perceived it. Right. And from that, I was amazed some of the comments section because the shooter, the, 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 the suspect in Navy blue, for, in my pers- perspective, my vantage point, it seemed like he had the gun out and his pants were dark too in color. And it was behind the table. So with the victim in white, I personally don't think he would have been able to even see the gun, especially if it's in a, in a dimly lit place. And oh. the gun was held uh, oh. underneath the table or at least away on the side, away from the victim's uh, line of sight. I don't underestimate grandmas in these streets. Got to be aware of our surroundings and always ask yourself when things get chaotic, is it worth it? Yes. But the problem is, is that it's not like I don't underestimate nothing in the street. No, the comment should be like, listen, you should not be brandishing a firearm inside, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wish Buddy would have caught him with that one hitter quitter and put him down instantly. It's just the stupidity. No punches should have been thrown. That shouldn't have happened at all. Mm-hmm. You know, people are missing, people are, are missing it. Justified, but played well. He baited him into catching them slugs. Mm-hmm. It's not justified. I mean, I don't care. 
even if it even if the law says it's okay morality wise it's not justified these are the things that piss me off you know because well, like from willie d live from what it from his own commentary it's almost like someone can use a stand your ground state and go and and aggravate someone into a fight so then they can use the stand your ground clause and get someone into a combative position where that person is is luring the person is egging them on where now that the suspect or not the suspect but the person that's egging that person on is drawing them into a deadly conflict and yeah. then one of the people can take out the weapon the one that's egging that other person on and then yeah. shoot that person yeah. so it's yeah, like yeah. you can trap somebody into okay. you can lure someone into your trap by using a law in your own favor because you have the upper hand by having a weapon yeah, you know, you know, uh, I don't have to stat in front of me, but I remember during the Zimmerman trial, uh, African Americans would stand your ground laws. They lost like ninety percent of the time. Like, like, I, and I don't have the exact. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I'm just gonna say this: in order for you to pull that stand your ground shit off, you better have a damn good lawyer. And Hood Booger Number One ain't got a lawyer. Hood Maybe Booger Number One, right? don't, Hood, Hood Booger Number One. Uh, anybody who's that stupid to do some shit like that. Hmm. You know, that's I mean, only people who have money who do dumb shit like that are like professional athletes who, you know, got a bunch of money and and, and see and, and also CT. I, I mean, that's just I, I just and also say, what CT. Yeah, 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 yeah. CTE, you know, when, when they have when they have a co concussion syndrome. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that's the only people who have that type of money. OK, I'm talking about the type of lawyer you need to pull that off is you damn near need a dream team for that shit. Because it's on video. You had the gun out. The guy took an aggressive posture and stand your ground. Okay. But this is the thing. What the fuck happened to just saying it's over a spilled drink? Hey, bro, I'm going to walk away. I mean, look, you know, and, and also I'm going to tell you this. This goes to a lot of fake alpha posture. So many people are so, oh, I ain't going to back down. I'm a fucking alpha male. This, and that. They've never been in a real conflict. They've never had to push themselves. They've never, look, I, I love it in the gym when I see dudes who come in and they're just the toughest motherfuckers in the world. And they get under a good 205 pound dude in jujitsu. And that motherfucker just starts grinding their ass out and they just quit. They never fucking come back. You know why? Because their ego can't handle it and they can't deal with the pressure. They come over to the stand up side with me and I'm like, okay. We're going to warm up with fucking 100 crunches. And then I, and I always tell them, if you can't do 100 crunches, okay. What do they do? First thing, the first 25 crunches, they're faster than anyone. And the second 25 crunches, they're slow as hell. And 70, by 75, they quit. You know? And mm -hmm. it's like, and the people, and, you know, we have like a 17-year-old girl who's doing them all at her own pace, building herself up. It's just that people get ego involved. They've never pushed themselves. They've never been in bad situations. Let me tell you something. Being poor is not, it's a, it's, it's a terrible situation to be in, but it's a doable situation because being poor in the United States, nine out of 10 times, and I've seen this personally, is 100% better than being poor in Africa, being poor in some countries in Africa, you know, like uh, Nigeria, Sierra Leone. It's far better than being poor in Thailand where you're eating bugs every day. Bugs, literally crickets and grubs. It's far superior to being bored, uh, poor in Central America, being poor in the United States. A lot of times people, they build themselves up on front of the ghetto and from this and that. They get this stupid mentality. You know what? And instead of just fucking walking away from a conflict, you ruin your life, someone else's life, and potentially kill people. That security guard is doing his fucking job. He got hit in the leg. Hey, you you know what? He's lucky he didn't get paralyzed. Yeah, yeah. And, he's still, him and, him paralyzed. and you know, he was probably just walking around like, what the fuck is going on in here? Holy shit, you know? It's just stupid. And I, I the thing that incenses me the most is that people do not think and then they get caught up in being such a fake alpha. We've seen, we, you know what? In the last three weeks, we've seen so many examples of fake alphas. We've seen the fresh and fit with with Myron waving his hands around, acting like an alpha. When Ayunde walked in there, Myron grabbed the gun and stepped back and said, come in here, come in here. Right away, right away. And he also added to his side too. Yeah, yeah, give me an excuse to shoot you because I don't want to fight. 
I, I got to protect these women. Shut up, dude. You don't have to protect these women. He knew he was coming. He said, I'm going to see you. Your door was unlocked. All of that fake bullshit, right? And then he, your- he broke the door down. He broke yeah, yeah. the door down. Yeah, you don't have to shit together. How many examples do we see with uh, Joe Schilling? Joe Schilling, right? When he walked by that guy, that drunk dude in the bar who said that Joe Schilling was six foot five, 270 pounds. He said he was Francis and Gano, basically. Joe Schilling is like, a, Joe Schilling's 185 er dude. He, he fights at 185 pounds, right? Six foot one, 185 pounds. But he said he was like, fuck it, some, some monster, some monster person. And then Joe Schilling walks into him, bumps and says, move out the way, motherfucker. Dude turns around, says something. Joe Schilling looks at him. Dude flinches. Joe Schilling, pop, pop, hits him, knocks him out, right? You know, all of this fake alpha posturing that people have, it doesn't lead to any good. It doesn't lead to anything nice. But then when you see real alphas, you listen to Jocko, and Jocko says, hey, you know what? The number one thing is somebody wants to fight. I, I, I walk away. I run away. Somebody says something. I, I walk away. All of that, I, I walk away until they touch me. Then I do something. That's an alpha male. Because you understand an alpha male is not only somebody who deals with the violence, but it deals with the repercussions, the accountability, right? Um, I'll, I'll close with this because I'm talking a long time, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm doing it. But I'm really passionate about this because I've taught urban self-defense for so long. And I remember teaching a class, and, and I was in San Francisco on a – uh, San Francisco, uh, we had a dojo right off Cap Street, you know, really a non-commercial dojo, right? You know, in a garage, but matted up and stuff. And we had like 15 people in there. And someone said, you know, Grover, uh, you know, I was doing an urban combat se- series. And they said, you know, Grover, uh, I bet you you fight a lot. I bet you got a lot of fights in your bars. And I was like, what? I said, fighting's horrible. Because something bad always happens. If, if, I, if, I, if I get a hold of you and I, I and I, I, maybe I go too hard and maybe I don't know. Maybe your arm's brittle. Maybe you have something wrong. Maybe you have structurally wrong and I break your shoulder. I break your arm. Uh, I throw you down. Uh, you know, then I'm liable for it. Mm-hmm. I hit you and you fall back. You hit your head and you die. I'm going to jail. You know, well, in this particular situation it was with a gun. Right, right. And uh, literally, he was stalking the, the guy in white outside exactly. of the door. He saw exactly. at this point. I don't understand. Like, was he so enraged that he didn't see that he hit a security guard? I mean, he probably didn't see he hit another person, like another customer inside of the bar and grill, but he definitely hit the security guard because the security guard was literally it was, it falling on the victim, the victim in white. And then the shooter was going outside mm-hmm. to to look like continue stalking and hunting the victim 100%. until. But it's, it's, but it's like I said, so much bad stuff happens when you fight and when you get into it. If you fight with your hands, right? Now magnify that by, and I used to tell people, magnify that by a thousand percent because that's a gun. Mm-hmm. A gun. That's a gun. Your gun is for your self-preservation. It's a lethal weapon. It's for self-preservation, not to prove a fucking point. And the guy, he's I, I'm going to tell you, he's not enraged. He's he's uh, imitating an alpha. I'm going to go out here and I'm so mad. I'm going to shoot and I've got to get him. You're imitating an alpha, mm-hmm. right? But what would a real alpha male do? Oh, man, fuck this. It ain't worth it. And walk away. Yeah. Because you're confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't care anyone's take on it. I don't care. Like, you know, Willie D is like, literally Willie D is like an idol of mine. And, and he said, like, you know, it looks like he set him up from the get-go so he can yeah. stand your ground law. I'm going to tell you this, dude. That's bullshit. Uh, if, if a stand your ground law works like that, to stand your ground law shouldn't be on the books. Yeah, I'm just telling you, it shouldn't be on the books if it works like that. You should not be able to follow somebody outside and fucking shoot at them. Mm-hmm. Because remember, I mean, at that point, you're not really standing your ground because you oh, are you're trying to uh, kill him. You're, you're trying you're to trap him. Yeah. You're, you're covering ground. Yeah. So you're, not, you're not taking a defensive position yeah. anymore. You're taking an yeah. offensive attack. Right. Bringing yeah. a defensive fight. Yeah. Right. So, so like, uh, so to me, I don't know what's astonishing is that this person, the, the shooter, James Simpson here, needs to use a gun to solve this matter. Like, I, I don't understand the thinking that's involved with that. Like, so when I'm like looking back, looking at it, it's almost like, you know how <laughs> this is going to sound kind of weird, but how, do you know, like there's sometimes there's serial killers and they'll use laws in their own power so they can, can commit their crimes without it being affecting them in a lawful manner. And so there's been cases of doctors that have been doing this and there's been cases of, I don't know, just a bunch of random stuff 
So it's just, it's really just extremely weird to me that someone would go out of their way to pull out a gun and try to take out somebody over a spilled drink. There to me is there's something off in that person's psychology there. Well, like, I, is it really about thinking about being an alpha? It just doesn't make sense. Well, the thing is this, there's something off in their psychology, you know, poor upbringing, poor raising, you know, something off in their psychology, but also, I mean, we've celebrated poor behavior so much that motherfuckers don't even know. Hmm. Like, like one of the things like coming up, uh, you know, when I was running around, a bunch of people brandished what had weapons with them. You know, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm gonna go to the trunk. Everybody was gonna go to the trunk on that ass, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that was the thing. I'm gonna go to the trunk on that ass. And it's like, well, shit, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> You're gonna go to the trunk on me. But uh, the funny part is like, the OGs would have told you, you don't know, shoot up a fucking restaurant. It brings too much heat. You can't get away with that. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker had no chance of getting away. Surveillance cameras everywhere. Yeah. What are you thinking? Even if that motherfucker had the lead attorney, he's ass out. <laughs> you know? He's ass well, you out. Know this aggravated assault and reckless endangerment, honestly, these charges seem minimal in comparison to the action that he took. Like He took a very serious series of steps of serious actions to try to take out an individual and all he is getting is aggravated assault and reckless endangerment. So oh. What are your well, thoughts on that? Like my, my thought is how how long is I what is the maximum penalty for aggravated assault in Georgia? Because hmm. it might be 25 years. Hmm. So you have to be careful a lot of times. I know one thing about uh, just being around a lot of lawyers, you want to be very careful and over uh overcharging someone because uh attempted murder, you may not be able to get that for some reason. Because the person hit him first, right? So you may not be. I don't know the laws there, but you may not be able to get it for some of people. What the fuck are you saying? This attempted murder, this, that, this, that. You know, it's gonna rain, rain, rain on us, right? You may not be able to get that though, but it also depends on how many years in the state penitentiary that is. Because you know, ultimately, in sentencing, the judge has that, and the judge has guidelines. But the judge, it's not a federal law, so the judge can charge what he wants, right? So. It's my understanding that, like, if maybe it was 15 to 25 years, he might say no less than 25 years with that, right? Uh, Grover, you know, one or two years is, is one year too much. You know that, right? <laughs> right. I, I, I'm just telling you. I, well, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've lived my life in a way that I'm not going to see the inside of a jail cell for a reason. You know, because I yeah. would never do some stupid shit like that. Uh, man, so this is the first time we've done a Zoom. Uh, Sooner or later, we're going to be stream yarding. We, we, we're coming for everybody. Yeah, we're going to be doing the video live sessions, and we're going to have a another video after this video because this is a sudden current event that popped up. The next video after this will be more light in manner. It will be more humorous. So it, I think this is very important to talk about considering that yeah, we've been it. talking about fake alphas and then people are resorting to escalating forms of violence by right. using weapons when... I mean, when it comes down to it, if someone's going to fight, just use the fist. Like, I understand that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to tell you this, though, and this is a very good lesson, folks. Just because someone's a fake alpha does not mean that they cannot squeeze a trigger. It doesn't mean that they will not escalate violence. It doesn't mean that they're not a sociopath. They, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. No, and so, like, just because a fake alpha, like a lot of us, like, you know, I think a lot of people want to look at Tate and say, oh, man, he's an alpha male, four-time world champion fighter. And then he, you know, had camp girls. He's a millionaire. And uh, and he lives in, over in Istanbul, blah, 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 blah. And then, or you want to look at other few folks who are like, oh, yeah, they're definitely alpha male. They do this and do that. Just it, because it, what's not an alpha male doesn't mean like 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 a Yunday doesn't mean that because a Yunday doesn't mean. Allende. I, what's his name? Allende. Allende, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, and I'm the black guy, can't pronounce. So I, I end day, <laughs> because I end day, uh, you may not believe that Myron's an alpha male. Doesn't mean that Myron's, uh, Myron can, or Abu is not going to shoot him when he goes in there. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that he's not going to shoot him when he goes in there. So you got to be very understanding of the social dynamics that's going on here, especially when you're in that, in that area and people trying to prove themselves, you know. Wait, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that. Andrew Tate even said that he wouldn't even want to get in a fight with someone with a weapon. 
Well, what, what he said, what he said was like, what he said was like, you know, so I may have to kill somebody. I remember he saying like, somebody disrespects you if you're with me. I may have to kill somebody because I hit that hard. You know, and this, that, that, and this. But here's the thing. If you know, like, I have very little desire to put my hands on somebody. I would just say, I have very little desire to do it. Because I, I, because sincerely, at one time or another, as I get older, it's not like that, right? As I approach 50, I'm not like I'm going to be able to just put someone down. But, like, honestly, at 35, I would have hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody between 25 and 35, it would have been a lot of pain for somebody fucking with me. And so, and... You know, I mean, I know I when I was working, especially when I was working, my last go round I was working doors and uh, working security in San Francisco. When I when I touched people, it was really bad for them, and I realized that, like, yeah, you know, you do this to somebody too much, they're gonna come back and hurt you. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know, because people can't take that. So I always lead with confidence, but also with politeness. You know, I lead with confidence and politeness. All right, mm-hmm. so. It appears that we are about to end our stream. Yeah. So uh, go on, go on, go on, tell them where can they find you at, man? Oh, we didn't even got to tell them to like and subscribe first. Well, you tell them where they can find you first. Oh, okay. You can find me at, well, you can look at all this, the, my links in the description below. And then also, if you want to follow me at IG, I'm not really on there a lot for right now. But yeah, just check out all the descriptions down below. And right. then where can they find you at? You can find me on the gram at I am Gorilla One. Uh, best way to get in contact with me. I am Gorilla One. Uh, and of course, I invite everybody to like and subscribe. Uh, like, like the poor man's podcast says, hit me with the HBO special. Help a brother out. Uh, like and subscribe. Give me a wait, share. Wait, so, wait, wait. Like, so he says, help a brother out. I mean, HBO special. What, what, how would I want to be? What would I be considered as? Oh, man. You, you're honorary, man. <laughs> you're honorary. Help a brother out. <laughs> been, around, been around black people since you was like 17 <laughs> what else do we have oh so what's the question of the day that you would ask the audience to uh, the que- comments down below? it's so weird doing this right but uh the question of the day the question i would ask the audience is why do we celebrate the worst behavior in culture mm-hmm. why do we celebrate the worst behavior in culture it's a serious question because it's a serious thing and what can we do to stop that shit? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So a uh, little serious topic, uh, breaking news. Uh, we keep giving it to you live, the Happiness Podcast Project, a.k.a. The Tip Network. The Tip Network. Yeah, because, I mean, after a while, Happiness Podcast Project sounded like just really too happy. Yeah, it's too happy. <laughs> So yeah, you can follow all our social links down in the description below. Yep, yep. It's other, I don't want to go all through all the different handles that we have. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, man, thanks for thanks for jumping on a Zoom with us, Scott. You know, you take care, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, I'll see you later. All right, boom, booty in your face. We out. <laughs>